Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw, and I'm aboard the Crystal Serenity, the first cruise on Crystal Serenity. Not, it's not a revenue cruise, but we have a lot of media on board. We have a lot of travel advisors on board. And most importantly, we have some of the, a lot of the top executives. And one of those is this gentleman next to me, Bernie Leopold, who returns to Crystal Cruises as the Senior Vice President of Hotel Operations. And Bernie has a little bit of a history uh, with Crystal. We're going to talk, as most people, a lot of people do on Crystal. That's the beauty of it. And we're going to talk about that and a whole lot more on Insider Travel Report. But first of all, I really want to talk a little bit about your background, and 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 you do have a long history with Crystal. Uh, in fact, back in the the I guess late '90s, you joined and you were you served aboard Crystal Harmony, right? That's correct. I started on board Crystal Harmony at the beginning of 1998. Uh, I was I was uh, hired to work at the front desk at the time. Um, and I worked my way through several positions on board, uh, and uh, I ended up being an IT officer out of all. Uh, so you actually have a history with this ship, because after you left Crystal Harmony, you ended up being part of the launch team for Crystal Serenity, right? That's correct. Yeah, I spent uh, I spent a year and a half in Saint Nazaire in the shipyard, and was part of the launch and inaugural team for for the Serenity. Yeah. And that was what 2003, I think. 2003. Yeah. Amazing. And so this was that was a brand new ship at the time. I remember it. I think I was on it at one point. And so you were very familiar with this. But let's talk a little bit about uh, because you, you also then really understand what the crystal DNA is. And we talked about this during the briefing. Uh, but talk about what is the crystal experience that you continue to deliver in this revamped company? Well, the crystal DNA is is uh, our our food and beverage program. It's our onboard entertainment. Um, it is our our shore excursion and land programs, and of course, uh, not to forget the, our crew. Our crew is our most valuable asset. And in fact, I think we you, you said I mentioned at the, the briefing we had for media and for the travel advisor on board that roughly eighty percent of the crew is back, right? Yes, we have. We are lucky and, and humbled actually when 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 we reached out to to our crew and we said hey we are we are ready to start up again do you want to come back to crystal uh the response rate was overwhelming and so we're lucky and, to, and that, that includes you 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 as well right because you came back and rejoined the company right no absolutely i mean i was with the company until the shutdown and then uh, i was just sitting tight waiting to see what was going to happen there it was it was pretty clear to me that the the brand would be would be uh, bought by somebody as we are you know, highly appreciated and rated and think thankfully we found the best owner we, we that was in the market well, and, uh, he has a little history in cruising yes. Man, Manfredi uh, uh, you know Lefebvre who uh, former owner of Silver Sea and when he, he he sold Silver Sea to outright to Royal Caribbean you, you thought oh maybe he's retiring no Manfredi doesn't retire right. No, it doesn't look like it. He's <laughs> he's a very proud ship owner. <laughs> Yeah, and he loves it. And we talked about this earlier with him. I was I saw him in the hallway, and he said, you know, you, you just can't give up. You have to keep getting cruise ships, and that's amazing. Now, the, uh, let's let's drill down a little bit about the changes that uh, and some of the similarities, including for dining options. I believe you have 11 different dining options now. Talk about those and what's new and maybe what's a little different. Well, we have 11 different dining options, as you mentioned, and it goes anywhere from uh, from the uh, the main restaurant, which is called Waterside, which which serves a variety of modern and classic dishes. The menu changes every night, so when you come on board for a cruise, you will never eat the same dish again unless you really love one so much that you want it the next day, then we will try to, to accommodate you. But Waterside is is absolutely a top-rated restaurant. Then we have specialty restaurants like uh, like uh, Nobu, the only Nobu restaurants. So um, Umi Uma, which is that, and actually I was lucky enough to, uh, to I've eaten there in the past in, in, in the Crystal in the old days, and I, I, I went to the launch event when you renewed your partnership with Chef Nobu. Uh, and tonight, actually, I'm going on, going to it again but then you have a brand new italian restaurant you had an italian restaurant but this is a different one right well we had an italian restaurant before which was called prego now we we completely updated not just the restaurant the restaurant was taken down all the way to the steel and we built a brand new bright modern uh, space but we also worked now that we have italian owners they they wanted more uh, authenticity mm -hmm. In the menu, so so we worked with with some Italian chefs in the background to update our menu, mm -hmm. and uh, and 
you up to tell I, me I, I thought it was amazing it was great it was a wonderful um, multi-course dinner uh, and it's named Dio Video uh, after the owner's family right correct yeah, so, so it has to be good right yeah absolutely <laughs> it, there, there was no uh, failure was not an option let's say that <laughs> way yes so you have that and then of course you have some of the more casual eaters you have obviously sort of your, your buffet area the marketplace which you did a great job I had uh, I've only, I think I've had a breakfast and a, and a lunch there but it, it's amazing Amazing food stations and all kinds of things like that, right? No, correct. Uh, the variety is is fantastic, and we change up there every day. Also, what what we serve, so it's yeah. not it's not the same boring buffet every day like you have in other places for sure. And then finally, you have you have uh, tastes is is uh, and then next to it is this sort of lunch outlet, uh, the grill or whatever. And uh, tastes, I haven't won't get a chance to do that. That for some of you who might be familiar with the more recent, that, that was where there was a Chinese restaurant, and now it's what what's the cuisine? now so taste is a, an international sharing concept so they're the uh, plates designed for for a group of people to share and order as many dishes almost you could compare it to tapa style uh, family style sharing concept which is uh, international cuisine so we try to bring local influences to wherever the ship is uh, into the menu and we update it accordingly so 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 Let's talk, let's go back to accommodations uh, because you've reduced the size, the capacity of this ship, uh, so you can have uh, bigger suites and a lot of things. And we'll talk about how you did that because it, that that was, took some some doing uh, in the shipyard. But originally, uh, this ship was worth like a thousand eighty guests, I believe, and now it's down to what seven forty. I'm not sure. Yeah, you're correct. So when the ship was launched, it was a thousand and eighty passengers in two thousand and three. Then during the last big refit that we did in two thousand seventeen. The capacity was taken down to 980, mm -hmm. and now we have taken it a step further. So we went from 980 to 740. Wow! And that's really given you a lot more space. And then you kind of redid all of the suites. All the suites really been redone, and you put in some really brand new, much larger suite product, right? Correct. So what we did is, we we completely took decks eight and nine down to the steel, almost like not almost. It is exactly like when you do a new build so you when you go on the gate or nine you can see from one end to the <laughs> other without any any obstruction and then we started to rebuild new cabins and and what we did is the the single cabins that we had before uh in, in the shipyard you speak in in modules right so a single cabin is is a one module cabin and then what used to be a penthouse on board crystal ships was a one and a half module cabin and the penthouse suite two modules and what we did now is we took all of those one module cabins and we converted them into two module cabins so wow. And, and our the suite here uh, is amazing. The suite we have, uh, it's it's just gorgeous. It's it's one of the newer I think sapphire suites uh, uh, like that. And then it is the penthouse suite is to die for. I mean, it's just uh, absolutely over the top, incredible bathroom, uh, the shower that goes on forever, plus a tub. So there's a lot of great features in this ship. And and that was probably the thing that you most had to do most because you know everybody's building bigger suites and bigger in their new in their newer ships, right? Correct. Yeah, space is uh, is the one of the biggest selling points, right? So you, you, if you if you uh, end up with a ship with, with the majority of only small cabins, you you will have a problem in, in especially in the market segment that we are in. And when you look at at uh, bookings, the the ship will always sell from the top down. Yeah. yeah. So everybody can get a beautiful suite now on Crystal Serenity and actually soon Crystal Symphony, which is coming out. Now, I, want, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I want to go back to the crew a little bit because mm -hmm. you did have 80% come back. What is the secret sauce that makes this crew, the service levels so high and also the, 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 that they want to come back and experience it almost like a family-like atmosphere? So for us, the crew is the is the most important component to to our product. Right? With, without our crew, we would just be like any other cruise line. Otherwise, it's just hardware, right? Well, anybody can build a new ship. Anybody can build uh, new spaces, make them look modern, shiny, uh, whatever you want. But if you don't have properly trained crew, uh, crew with the right attitude, uh, crew that is happy, then then you will you will not be successful. Mm -hmm. And uh, happy crew will make for happy guests because their service comes from the heart and not because it's a job. 
my next question is really what was it like what was the process like to refurbish uh, both this ship and obviously you got crystal symphony coming out and you were out, spent a fair amount of time up in trieste at fink and terry uh how many how long did it take and and what was it like well it's still we're still not done yeah. um we still have crystal symphony in the in the shipyard for another month but we really started uh, the process as soon as, as uh, our new owners bought the ships. Uh, we worked together with several architects, uh, architects that were, were uh, specializing in, in the uh, cabin uh, and guest suite design. Uh, we worked with, with another architect that was responsible for, for the uh, remodeling of all the public spaces mm -hmm. that we touched and the planning process started immediately and it lasted uh, I would say all the way until November December of last year and then of course contracts were signed and the last the last six months uh, so pretty advanced, pretty uh, 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 ambitious schedule right uh, I, I would say that because I was I was also the owner representative for the new build of Crystal Endeavor at the time uh, for me having those two ships in in what considered a dry dock was a lot more complicated labor intense uh difficult to execute than than a new build really yeah so absolutely this was harder to do than when you uh were dealing with crystal endeavor so yes. that that'd be pretty amazing and and uh, is there any differences from what symphony is going to be like when it comes out i believe that i think it's the first of september uh are you basically doing this i mean it's a small somewhat smaller ship i believe uh, uh but i don't know what you're taking it down to but so symphony Again, when she was launched, was uh, was 960 guests. Then during the the last refit, uh, we took her down to 848, and now when she is leaving, 606 guests max wow. capacity. So this is even a hundred less than that. So she has she'll be pretty spacious as well. The right? guest to space ratio, I'm sure, is is unreached in the industry. And you're doing the same thing with the suites and 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 putting the the, the higher decks and and putting in better suite products. Right? Ex exactly the same scope of work and and the product will be just as fantastic as what you see here on Ser on Serenity. Yeah. And dining is about the same. Pretty Absolutely, much. yeah. Yeah. Well, I do remember. I had to mention this when you mentioned it at the beginning, Waterside, uh, and I, I thought at one point the 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 main dining room and I forget what its name was back then in Crystal Harmony mm -hmm. was the best dining room at sea. No question about it. It was just uh, I went on when my son was 12 years old and he he went by himself to eat at the restaurant because he wanted his waiter and his you know and they of course treated him well and he got to learn how to eat well uh and i that was where that you could get almost anything you wanted if it wasn't on the menu they'd come and get it for you right right and and we we still try to do that right no no request is too big or too small for us to to try to accommodate yeah well it's it's an amazing service team down there and you know we i think we often get you know uh, uh we have all these specialty restaurants that are absolutely wonderful to go to and all the restaurants up here on uh deck 12 uh in the marketplace and everything else and taste but boy you, you can't forget uh uh waterside because that is kind of the mothership and it's where where it really happens right i agree with you 100 percent. now let's talk a little bit about uh the final question I have is that while all this was going on, because you didn't have enough work to do, mm -hmm. your owner decides um, we're going to keep growing. And they, it was announced actually at uh, the briefing earlier this week that you're going to build four more ships, two expedition ships and two uh, classic sort of ocean ships. Well, and, and you've been working on those too, right? Uh, how, how is that experience going to be like? How are you going to uh, bring the what we're, we're seeing here on the rejuvenated uh, Crystal Serenity to those vessels and what is might be different? like you said we we uh we were not bored just with the uh with the refit of, <laughs> of the of the two ships and then in addition you know we are, of course we are excited to to uh, have an owner that wants to grow the fleet that wants to modernize the fleet and and uh the the uh the goal is of course to build ships that are in the same category mm -hmm. that are in the in the same in the same tonnage range as as the existing ones and the product will be the same as you see now on, so you on want consistency on, right we do want consistencies but of course we also have ideas uh, 
after 30 years of operating here, right, we, we have ideas of what we want to do different, uh, how we want to use spaces differently, bringing new ideas on board that we couldn't realize now because of space limitations or because of, uh, say, building limitations where you need an A60 fireproof zone to put in a show kitchen, for example, which is very, very hard, if not impossible, to do in a, in a dry dock situation. So you basically had a blank canvas uh, for the for these new builds and including your first two expedition ships. And I know that your owner was really did want that uh, Chris, Crystal Endeavor, which unfortunately was sold to another company. Uh, and and but he's going to. So his reaction was to build his own, right? Absolutely, yeah. and and we were all equally disappointed because obviously we know the ship very well. Yeah. Uh, she's in good hands now, and. Uh, we will build another one even nicer. There you go. So the first, there, it could be as early as second quarter when you begin construction. So when would these ships potentially be out? For the expedition ships, the timeline we are looking at right now is 30 to 36 months after delivery. Wow. After and you do have, I think, you, I think the idea was to bring one expedition, one classic ocean back at this point, and then you're going to do the second expedition and the second one, right. and the it second never, classic. Right. It never it never pays off from a, from a uh, an architectural and planning cost to just build one ship uh, financially, so you always, you always aim for two to start there you go so you got two more to go and that's going to be a process and we were i got on this ship i said is it just going to be these two ships and that's it and then you know uh but no it's it's not not yet it's, it's amazing so it looks like you're going to continue to get some work for a little while longer huh? they, they put you to the paces now right i'm not complaining i'm excited no nobody here i will say this right nobody that was part of the old crystal team sitting at home for for a long time trying to see what's going to happen to the company we don't need any extra motivation. Being here is all the motivation we, we need to to, to uh, drive this. Absolutely. Well, Bernie, it's been great talking with you. A lot of interesting insights about the whole process of how these ships came back. And everybody said, oh, they just put a coat of paint on it. Well, they did put a coat of paint on it, but a lot more. Three, 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 co three coats of paint. You can walk around. You smell the new carpeting. It feels like uh, someone said it smells like a new car. I said, no, it smells like a new ship. And it really, it feels brand new. New. I mean, to be honest with you, every time I went on Crystal Serenity or even Symphony, because you did some amazing renovations during that time, uh, I never felt like it was an older ship. It always felt brand new because you took such good care of it. So I think that's that's a credit to what you guys do. No, absolutely. And, and uh, having the ships in this great state of maintenance when we started the refitting process allowed us to concentrate on, on everything that we wanted to do new from, from the ground up and all other spaces just needed some, some touch-ups but the, the, the ship's condition is fantastic. Absolutely and, and luckily you have the crew now to do it although you're gonna have to recruit a lot more crew when you have these new ships right? No absolutely and, and uh, if the, when the fleet is growing we have to react very early with the planning stages to, to attract new crew members, bring them on board the existing ships, train them, and then find a good balance uh, of crew percentage that we want to take off uh, the existing ships and help the new crew members roll out the new ship. Get your clients to come. Those who loved Crystal in the past will love it now. Those who don't know about it, I think will be amazed at what a wonderful luxury line this continues to be and what a great brand under the new ownership, but still with the same experience like Bernie here uh, to really inculcate that uh, special Crystal experience, that special DNA. Again, Bernie, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about this and your experience because you've been a busy guy. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. I'm James Schellinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.